Today's episode of In the Trenches is brought to you by System 12 Guitar Method. Sign up today at RyanRoxy.com. In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, 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 and welcome to another live stream episode of In the Trenches. I am your host, Ryan Roxy. And um, yeah, I feel good. I have a little bit of a wind machine in here because it is still a heat wave that's taking Europe by storm. I guess it's the world. It's the whole world by storm. So we're just lucky that, um, yeah, the sun is out and it's not uh, burning us to a crisp as yet as they are in the West Coast. And like I said, our audience over there in California, West Coast, uh, sending our thoughts out to you. Stay safe and hello, rest of the world. It's in the trenches time. Um, first thing, if you're new to the podcast and you're listening to us on an audio uh, version of this, whether it's Apple or Spotify, thank you very much for doing that. But we'd really like to see you on our YouTube channel, which is our Ryan Roxy official YouTube. And you can hit the subscribe button, which is right there. God, why do I even still, after all these episodes, Vic, I still get the point wrong. But you'll see the point. You'll see my finger point to the subscribe button if you are in the live chat like you are right now, like the In the Trenches faithful that you are, the RGA. Oh, folks, what a weekend it's been. It's been live gigs I played over the weekend. That's why I have a little bit of a tan. That's right. Well, we'll see if our guest does too, because today, folks, I'm excited. Uh, we are old friends. And uh, she mentioned that in the promo for the lead up to this In the Trenches episode. Uh, we're old friends from way back when um, we both lived in New York City. And then we have kind of taken uh, similar paths. We've uh, we both lived in New York. We've both lived in Los Angeles. We've both played together and uh, we've recorded together a lot. And, uh, and then we both subsequently moved to Europe. So we're going to talk about all these type of things but you know of course i want to talk about the music i want to talk about the songwriting i want to talk about fronting the band i want to talk about the guitar playing uh that our guest does do she's uh probably the band that i associate her, her with most is the new york loose and possibly you do too but she has many other bands that she's been a part of and a solo artist all throughout and she's putting out her first official solo album this year so we're going to talk about all things west would you please welcome in the trenches bridget west hello bridget hi <laughs> what's happening what's going on how you doing yeah i'm okay you have a very a very nice uh, diaphanous look right now um don't our our, our, our uh web will in improve i know it will okay but, uh, uh, yeah it looks a bit i look a bit fuzzy it looks a bit <laughs> 70s porno it does a little like penthouse <laughs> with a, a little style. bit totally <laughs> yeah a little penthouse <laughs> believe me it's not going that way though but yeah <laughs> Well, you know what? There's there, there's no porn there. There's only dog porn, which because we talked about before the show, the dog porn is is amazing because our producer Vic has a dog called Stanley uh, that he likes to post lots of pictures up, and I always um, hassle him by putting hashtag dog porn up on any of the comments, and people freak out. But uh, <laughs> you have a Stanley over there, a dog, and uh, uh, yeah, dog I have right a dog. I know. Like out of the gate, before we get into the music, before we get into the new solo band, before we get into everything, you are into animals, yes? Yeah, big time. And I'm really get, into animals. I love animals. And and you're taking care of dogs right now. And what is what is Stanley UK doing? Because we have Stanley Arkansas, you know, behind Vic on the couch. But uh, Stanley UK, what's Stanley <laughs> doing there? St Stanley, uh, he's in a giant bean bag. Um, I can probably get him over here. Um, well, we don't want to start. We don't want to start that thing that happened before, where he was. He just wanted to get on camera and start barking. Yeah, he's he is a he. He loves being the center of attention. So yeah, he'll probably come come around later on when he feels a little bit like he needs a little bit of attention from me. But yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm just doing this for a friend because they're in in Spain and they said, "Do you want to come and stay?" Um, but they have a studio here as well, so I can record here as well. So it's uh, it's really just sort of. Um, a favor for a friend and then i get the favor in return i get to hang out with stanley and i get to record 
Well, you're doing a favor for a friend, which is me as well, because you're on our podcast. And we appreciate well, you being. Oh, thank you. Well, it's also, you know, a pleasure. So it's, fine. it's been a few years since we we've been able to talk and we've never been able to, uh, you know, really the last couple of years, it's always been either passing very quickly at an Alice Cooper show. Yeah. Um, at one point. So we've never had a, a good time to hang and talk about uh, the musical paths that uh, both of us have taken. And it wasn't up until the time I was saying the intro about we, we've lived a lot of coincidental similarities where we both we met in New York. We can, start, mm -hmm. we can start right there. Actually, we start going back to get forward. What do you say? <laughs> That's our gratuitous motorcycle wow. sample that we have. Oh, I think that's great. Let's go back to go forward. <laughs> well, out of the gate, we met in New York way back in the 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we, we met, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, we met over at Sony Music Publishing because we were both signed with Sony Music Publishing. Is that sort I don't, of what happened? I don't think so. I remember meeting you at a very sort of really uh, grotty rehearsal studio somewhere on the Lower East Side or maybe Midtown. I think that you came to, maybe because I was looking for a guitar player, and I think you came for, we wanted to just see what would happen if we played together. I think well, that's where we met. I think that's so. That's where we okay. Well, what eventually happened, I remember at those Sony uh, publishing studios, is I eventually ended up playing on some of those demos. Yeah, right? you did. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and you had a ton of songs. Um, do you still have any of those demos out, uh, like, like somewhere in in a dat <laughs> tape or in a cassette? It had, they, they always came on cassette tapes back in those days, right? Yeah, um, I will have to look. I will look. I will look in my attic and I'll find out. And if I do, I'll try and figure out how I can transpose them into, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a, a format that we can listen to now. Yeah, I'll put it in digital. What you'll do is you'll put out your <laughs> solo album and then all the sort of uh, uh, extra material you can put on a whole nother bonus box set and maybe you can slap some of those uh yeah Ryan good Roxy idea demos on there oh well hey, it's not Thank like you. it hasn't been done before it's called the mm. roxy box <laughs> and i think i have one right here so i can promo, okay promo <laughs> let's but, do uh, that we so we met in new york and then we mm -hmm. eventually came to los angeles maybe at separate times did you come after i got the hell out of new york or you know yeah, it was sort of like feeling like we needed to leave New York, right? At that point, it's sort of like there was something going on with the vibe in New York. It was getting too competitive and everybody was getting too almost provincial. It was all like about New York. And I was like, yeah, I, I want to kind of be a little bit more about my, you know, the rest of the world as well. So, um, yeah, I think we probably did. I, I, well, I moved to, to LA after the first um New York loose tour of England um which was I'd say 1995 or something like that 1995 96 right around that yeah time. exactly so we did we we did a huge kind of lots of tours in uh, Europe and and mostly in England and um and then we ended up in LA yeah does that ever bum you out a little bit that New York had all the ingredients to have a great musical uh, a great musical sort of genre or vibe and, and atmosphere, kind of like the same way that Seattle had theirs at that time, as well as, as Los Angeles had had theirs a couple of years earlier. It seemed like it had all the ingredients for this. It great, did. What, now, and you were saying that perhaps it was just the competition that we felt in New York and that, that sort of like, you know, kill or be yeah. killed attitude or what was it? So I just did um, a podcast um, and it's called Straight to Video Podcast. Okay. Oh, we love and I, Straight to Video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. right? Yeah, great. exactly. And I thoroughly went into that whole thing, um, which was really interesting because I had a couple of, a couple of, you know, sort of comments from people that were around then. They were like right on Bridget for actually calling it as it was. So, yeah, it was cutthroat. I mean, no one wanted to help each other. 
everyone wanted to stomp on each other. I, I, you know, my favorite story around that time was when Madonna came to see New York loose at Coney Island High. And um, she was thinking about signing us. And so I knew she was coming. So, you know, we, we got an opening band and, and we, we uh, played at Coney Island High and the opening band who I won't even mention their name decided that they were gonna go on like 40 minutes late so that Madonna could see them instead of us. Uh -huh. You know, it was like stuff like that happened all the time. And you're thinking, really? Um, anyway, I remember walking up the stairs from the dressing room and going, I've, I've got to apologize to her. I've got to just make sure she stays to see us. Or, you know, hey, I, who, who doesn't want to meet Madonna? I mean, so anyway, so I, I walked I walked up the stairs and I found her and she was like the tiniest little thing. I could, she's so small. I mean, her hand was like like a little, like a little child's hand. And I reached out and I was like, please. I thought please. you could fit her in your hand. It was so, she was. <laughs> but she was lovely. Her whole kind of, I'm not a fan of her music. I'm just going to say that now, but her whole kind of vibe was, it was so New York tough girl. You know, she really was. And I just said, hey, I'm really sorry. These guys, you know, are, um, are running late. You know, we just, try, you know, if you could stay for us, that'd be good. And she just went, these guys suck. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, well, like I mean, that was like the kind of the, the 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 kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. It's like there was no support; it was all cutthroat, right? Do I sound angry? I don't mean to sound angry. I'm no, over it. You don't sound angry at all. You <laughs> sound like the real deal. And and here's the thing: this is how my feeling of one hand washing the other, both hands washing the feet, and supporting each supporting each other, whatever we do, will always lead to the greater good. Absolutely. If you want to hear, you know the long version of that story of course you're going to go check out rob lane's straight to video because yeah i talk rob a lot lane. about that i and, talk about and, that yeah and i was going to bring up this madonna connection um a little bit later in the show in a, a okay. section that we call never let the truth get in the way story get, never ah. let the truth get in the way of a good story but that's okay because we got it out of the way and we have just found out that the madonna connection is not fiction it's fact, Vic. It's fact. The Madonna. Yeah, there you go. And he's trying the to Madonna, look the Madonna. The Madonna came to the show. The God Madonna. The you, Madonna. <laughs> well, we're hanging out with the Bridget West. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the club was called Coney Island High. I mm -hmm. um, I was just a couple of years removed from that. I think that was that Jesse's club yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. okay jesse from d generation yeah. and uh i had moved back to la at that point because when i was living in la or in new york with electric angels and i was playing in electric angels and by the way i just spoke to jonathan daniel yeah uh, three three days ago he gave how you, is he, gave he? You a big hello he said oh. to give you a big hello he goes, oh. he goes I, she's that girl writes the best lyrics so oh. you know if it's coming from Jonathan, who was oh my the, God. our chief ly lyricist in Electric Angels, it was a huge compliment. He always he always was a big fan, but he said to say hello right now. So uh, oh my God, yeah, was... hi Jonathan, if you're listening, very <laughs> nice to get that compliment. That's going to keep me going for a long time. Thank you. Well, there you, and, he, and he actually did say, hey, make sure you talk about the that that Coney Island High trip. You know that those days where where the band was just uh, forming because. New York Loose formed, obviously, in New York, mm -hmm. uh, but then you made your grade and you sort of uh, got the deal mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, we did, because nobody in New York wanted to sign us. Not even you know? Madonna when she was starting Maverick. Not but, even... at the same... <laughs> but did she you know why? about it? Was it part of that? Was it part of the reason? Did no, she because she, she wanted to sign... Um... She wanted to sign me, but then they had Alanis Morissette and they were like, oh, we can't have two. This is when no one, you know, really took sort of women in rock seriously. You know, like you can't have two women, you know, on the same label. Yeah. Duh. I mean, now that would never happen, <laughs> you know, but yeah. So that's why. <laughs> yeah. Because like um, she's guy. She's new. Yeah. Uh, guy something or other. I can't remember her kind of guy name. Guy yeah, her main man. He was like, oh, no, you know, we, we're signing Alanis and that's it. You know, great. But, you know, anyway. So so that's why. You know what? There's 31 flavors of ice cream at Baskin Robbins for a reason. All right. That's the way I think of it. You yeah. can, there's always different flavors and it doesn't matter whether you have 
a penis or vagina. It doesn't matter. You can have as many people on the label as are talented. Yeah. Like I mean, I am um, the way. Absolutely. And I, but I think back then, remember women fronting bands playing guitar was very rare. I mean, you only had Joan Jett, Chrissy Hind, and I think that's it. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like now where it's no big deal to have a girl bass player, a girl drummer, a girl, you know, singer, and like everybody else is a guy, whatever. It, it, it was so, you know, such a thing back then. It was such like a novelty, you know, I was, right. I was like a novelty, which it shouldn't have been. You know, I did everything I could in my power to, you know, play guitar like a boy. And I kind of dress <laughs> like a boy. I kind of still do dress like a boy. You know, I was, I was having trans issues, you know what I mean? I was like. I, I really should have been a, a man. I really should have been a boy. Um, I think but I would have been. Up, that that's those your influences were. You know, I want to say, and we just had him on the show a couple of weeks ago. Wayne Kramer from the MC5. Oh yes. You know. Oh my God, yes. Iggy Pop. Absolutely. And um, obviously, you know, someone that we have a big connection to, Alice Cooper, and I put it, you know, <sighs> big time. The, and and all and all three of those uh, artists too were probably wrestling with their fashion and and their everything. sexuality and how they wanted to pre present themselves in the world. I mean, the New York Dolls are such an amazing um, example of that. They were a trans band before there was even anybody even thought about it. It was just a natural artistic expression. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very uh, I really really love that the world is now sort of starting to embrace that. Um, that sort of idea, you know, that we, we don't have to get stuck in this gender thing all the time. Um, well, it, it's now, great growing for up in New Jersey. Rock and roll. When you were growing up in New Jersey, you're a Jersey girl and you, yeah, you moved across the, over the bridge to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was told that you now. Wow. Now that's a photo. Is that you sailing the uh, the Hudson, the Hudson River? <laughs> Where is it's that? in uh, it's the Jersey Shore. Yeah, I was really young. You see, I have no tattoos. I was just like a regular girl, you know, um, hanging around the Jersey Shore. But I love to do all the things that boys did. So I was like an, into surfing, sailing and skateboarding, um, guitar playing, you know. I was sort of like, you know, I had a mini bike. <laughs> I, was a little, I was like a tomboy. But, you know, I'm reading here that uh, your sister's boyfriend, though, was into, be into the Beatles. So was that yeah. the first? Was that the first sort of taste of rock and roll? And then from there, it spread on to MC5 <laughs> and Stooges. And how did you find these? Can you wait? Can you Detroit hear that band? knocking on the door? Can you hear dog? that? Is that Stanley? <laughs> no. Wants, who That's is that? Alfred. That's my dog, Alfred. He did, wants to come Alfred in to here. Come in? Yeah, if Alfred wants well, to come in, join the party, man. It's all so right, hang on. on. He, if he has a cup of tea in his hand, I'll let him in. If he does not, he's going to have to stay where he is. <laughs> One sec. That's not a problem because we are hanging out with the Bridget West of uh, the New York Blues. And uh, okay. now we I'm have... sorry, I'm back. It's not a problem. Well, uh, the, Hold on, I've got to put dog my one more time because I know there's Stanley is, is in yeah. The well, I've got three dogs here at the moment. I've got I've got Alfred, who's my dog. Okay, and then I've got Frida, who's also my dog, and she's a Romanian rescue dog. And then I've got Stanley, who I'm house sitting for and then i also have my daughter bb who's here with me as well would you like to meet bb of course man bb make it onto the podcast we come on b this is bb b b i b i you know my wife is uh hello how you doing oh that's, that's the right t-shirt too as well i know she's got her bridget west t-shirt on oh, man, i'm representing yeah she's representing say hi to everybody What's up, Hello. Baby? How you doing? Hi. Nice to have you. Nice to have you on the show. Do you play music yourself? Um, I used to do a bit of singing. Um, and last summer I tried to learn bass guitar, but because of school, it kind of didn't really work out. Oh, don't worry. We have the program for you. We have the System 12 guitar program that, we'll put, that we'll hype up in the commercial, but we'll get you oh, playing yes. yet. We have and to get maybe, her on that. Maybe the next time uh, we'll have you on as a guest, baby. <laughs> Look, baby, someone's saying they love your hair. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she, she just has this T-shirt on. I just wanted to mention that I have some of these T-shirts. If anybody wants one, just give me a message and uh, we'll figure out how to get you one. Um, because I just found them in my attic. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, B, do people call you B for short? Some of them. 
Okay, good. My, my, my wife is named Bianca, so she's B. And also around her family, she's Queen B. Are you Queen B as well? Sometimes. You say I'm Queen B. Um, <laughs> no, she's B. B. I actually, do you know what? Her her nickname is Beetle, speaking of the Beatles. Uh-huh, <laughs> I call her I Beetle. From. Yeah, awesome. I call her Beetle. But yeah, it's BB. And well done to the chat, people that are spelling her name correctly. So it's B I B I. Well B-I-B-I. done, guys. Exactly. <laughs> Bianca, when I call her B, it's B-I, always. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. Awesome. Nice to meet you, BB. Nice to meet you, too. I'll see you again. <laughs> we'll see you again on In the Trenches. Definitely. I love it. <laughs> put your band together. Yeah. Put your playing bass. <laughs> so she'd be perfect. Oh, that, I know. You know what, that, gives me per, that gives me hope in rock and roll. It gives me right? hope that there's a future. Well I done. Know. The, the oh. young, the young. No, because she's, um, yeah, she's good. She's really, really good. But she also does so many other things. She's an amazing um, artist. She's like a fine artist. That's kind of her thing. But, and, um, but she's very, uh, very musical, very much like her mummy. <laughs> is, she, is she separating? Uh, did, did she did, does she have the some of the same influences as you do? Like, as does she like Alice Cooper, for instance? Oh my God, it's so weird. I didn't even know. The other day, we were driving. I was driving her to a um, a friend's house, and she's playing her her podcast. You know, her I'm um, sorry, her playlist, and it has Alice Cooper on it. It has Joan Jett on it. It was like so cute, and we're like singing in the in the car. I'm like, Beep, I didn't even know you like this stuff. She everything is very secret. You know, teenagers they have, they live live a secret life. So who knew until the other day that she actually did? And her favorite Alice Cooper song is Poison. Of course, there you go. I always so, yeah, say she loves- to any, anyone that, uh, you know, has a kid that's into this classic rock and especially into Alice Cooper, I say, if, you, if your kid's into Alice Cooper as a direct result of really, really great parenting or really, really bad parenting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it Ooh. could be a combination it, of both. It could be a I combination. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Well, good, so- man. Um, well, we were talking about dogs. Now we're talking about your daughter and and what it's like growing up. Look, you know what? This is like this is like coffee talk. Five 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 four 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 four. You remember that? We're talking about our dogs. <laughs> we're talking right. about our that, daughters. That folks right? is the original <laughs> coffee talk and SNL coffee talk. A skit. It's a, <laughs> it's from an it's from a, yeah. a, a SNL skit. That's and right. it was uh, so Mike Myers. Be aware of imposters that try to come across as the new coffee talk. Because that old coffee talk, I remember. Coffee talk, I right? Totally remember. It was all right with Barbara Streisand. Her nails were like butter. <laughs> I'm just oh joking. My, God. my, my, so my buddy funny. Stefan, he has a, he has a podcast now called Coffee Talk. So there Get you out. go. Get out. I wonder where that name came from. Coffee I wonder where the name talk. of that. I think we figured out that uh, Oh that my mystery. God, that's so funny. Another mystery solved. Well, yeah. really quickly, because you just yeah. introduced us to your lovely daughter, Bibi. Uh-huh. Um, it's hard enough to be a rock I have a roll. son as well, by the way. I have a son who's not here. but Okay. And, and, yeah, uh, he's in, he's in London. Name? What's his, his name's name? Jasper. Jasper. So Jasper and Bibi. It's hard mm. enough to be a rock and roll roller in the business parent-wise. It's hard enough to be a female in the rock and roll business, as we know. Yeah. What the fuck is it like being a female mother in the rock and roll business? Is it, is it, do you find it very, very oh. challenging or do you just make it work <sighs> one way or another? Well, not only that, it's um, in a foreign country. Right. So I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't have any of my old friends around to kind of back me up. Right. So um, it's really hard. I mean, I think it was almost it, 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 like when I make a, well, first of all, I apologize to all my friend, fans for not making records as, as often as I would like to. So I did 2010, the first Desperate Hope, well, Bridget West and the Desperate Hope were self titled. Took me another four years to get New York with Love out, which was the second one. Um, and now it's taken me another, you know, four years to get something new out. So basically it's to, you know, I really take being a parent really seriously. I am, I love being a mother. It's, it's been the most amazing adventure of my entire life. And I, it's to answer your question, it's virtually almost impossible. Right. Right. I can't really, you know, I, I tried to do a little bit of touring, but it was too difficult. And, um, you know, I made my kids my priority. And, um, but I was lucky enough to be able to just at least do 
a couple of records, you know, that I'm proud of. So you've done a lot of records with and the, and the thing I want to get into so many different genres, because that's why I wanted to, uh, I don't know if I said that uh, enough in the intro is that it hasn't been just punk rock, heavy guitar influenced as is the New York loose with pop mm. overtones as well. But there's also an Americana vibe that you have uh, taken under that genre of music. And yeah. This newest sort of Bridget West music is perhaps even different from those genres as well. And it's all, mm. what would you say this uh, newer music that you're doing right now is a, uh, a combination of, is it everything um, that you? Yeah. I mean, are you talking about talk, uh, can you talk and, uh, let's build a fire. Those two the, songs, the songs that you put out during the pandemic, you've released one, right? Can you talk to your fans yeah. you know, that you've released out? What, what is that sort of, um, where are those influences coming from? Is it just like any artist that you've, look up to they can have a spectrum because i think the same we're like the same in the sense that the artists that we grew up listening to had a spectrum it wasn't just one single style absolutely yeah i don't really know and i don't really have a um thank you uh kinga ann Tabor, for that um i i don't know you know i just i just write songs I, i've never really wanted to say oh i am a you know a rock and roll rock chick and that's it you know i i love um music and i love the craft of songwriting for me it's all about the song and then how you dress it up i guess is uh is sort of you know who you're working with in the studio at the time and that kind of stuff i wanted to do something optimistic i think with with can you talk i wanted to i kind of was i was thinking a little bit like nick lowe like rock pile like that kind of thing where it was like kind of americana but and a slightly more quirky kind of sense of humor way. So that's yeah. why that's that's where I was sort of thinking with with that song. But I, I love just, I love go ahead. I just heard Cruel to be Kind the other day and I just realized what a frigging great song that was right? as well. I know. You know. And just the way it sounds. It's not even the song. It's just there's something away about the way it sounds where it, it's not too heavy. There's something kind of subtle and sort of plodding around it. It's not obvious guitar riffs it's nothing obvious about it and i quite like that i quite like the idea of that sort of subtle and just letting the song come through you know it's very i guess it's very sort of pop but um you know well well you know what we're gonna look forward to hearing from it and perhaps supporting it which we're going to get into in just a little bit tonight. thanks i mean the uh, rest of the record won't be like what i'm trying to do is i would love to do some kind of more stripped back stuff like really stripped back and then some some more sort of kind of more produced stuff so yeah are you recording anything in the, that studio that you're staying over at yeah and taking care of the dogs you're doing it right now so you're working on it as we speak uh-huh yeah it's good. It's good to catch you in this creative process and this creative uh, mode as well. Uh, do you remember what was one of the first songs that you wrote and what age you were when you started writing songs? Because you've been doing it for a while. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> look, okay, that was really cute. That picture. Oh my Is god! That, no, I was, who's who's got the guitar and who's got the me. magic eight ball? Okay, that's you me. with the guitar. Who's got the yeah. magic eight ball? My my sister Elena has the magic eight ball, and she's probably going. Will will Bridget be a songwriter? Yes or no? <laughs> what, <laughs> is it is it actually true? Jersey girl, six brothers and five sisters, so you're one of twelve. Yeah. Damn. Did you live in a I shoe? <laughs> um, I mean, what the hell? Yeah. All and, the old where, women where, that did, where did you sit in that? Were you right smack dab in the middle, or were you the youngest? Well. Oldest? I am the I'm number eleven, and if you know anything about me, eleven is is my number. So I'm I'm kind of I'm not like a super duper numer numerology freak or anything, but number eleven is a really magic number for me. So I am I'm number eleven. I'm second to the youngest. Number. You know, if, know. if you stick just uh, the number eleven and you just put two other horizontal lines on it, it could be seventy seven as well. You know that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so 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 Roxy seventy seven is my number. Bridget West eleven is yours. Have you oh, we ever... found another connection. <laughs> you... Oh no, no, there's a lot of connections I'm seeing. I, I mean, love. obviously New York to L.A., then to Europe. Yeah. But you have some connections with um, 
someone that we had on the podcast uh, um, a couple months back. And you guys can always go check out any of these older episodes of In the Trenches. In fact, we hope that you do. We hope you hit that subscribe button that's right there on your uh, YouTube official channel. And um, But we had... Um, um, God, now I'm blanking, but no. Um, come on, Vic. Now I'm going to say I made this big hype up, but you and... Who is um, it? <laughs> oh, my God, damn it. Oh, you don't have one of those brain farts. I you know. Have a brain fart. um, and I never thinking, have them, but and, and you're, and you're talking yeah. as you're thinking, and you're thinking, okay, well, who? And I know the chat will come and save me, but uh, she plays bass. Is and, it Sean uh, from White Zombie? No, 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 because I know you were in a band with Sean. Okay. And, uh, uh, not, and Vic, my producer, is not helping me by going in the private chat and telling me. Susie Quattro we had on. Oh, and my Susie's God. Susie's from Detroit, who actually lives in the UK. So there's a little, yeah. little bit of a similarity right there. Thanks for saving me, Vic. Thanks a lot. There you yeah, go. Everybody in the chat's know. like, dude, duh, it was Susie Quattro, of course. <laughs> but um, you know, have, you ever, have you ever met Susie? Out yeah, I have, UK? actually. Mm. Okay, um, I met her at, um, at a studio that is owned by Ray Davies. Crouch End. I don't know if it's still there. But yeah, so she was recording and I was recording there. And it was so cool to meet her. Because actually, I, don't you remember her as Pinky Tuscadero from, from Happy Days? Yes, I do. Of yeah, I do. she was like I, Pinky I mean, Tuscadero. 48 Crash for me was the one that, that kind of, that for, for whatever reason, that song, 48 Crash, was always the one that just sort of stuck out to me. But I of yeah. course you remember Pinky Tuscadero. Pinky Tuscadero. I mean, or was that leather? Yeah, was no, it leather, leather, leather Tuscadero? That was leather, leather Tuscadero. But then she, Pinky she, was her little sister that came. That you know, Pinky was her little absolutely sister. Opposite, opposite. Pinky Tuscadero. What? Well, yep. she was the older sister Pinky of Tuscadero leather. Was Pinky, Pinky, Pinky Tuscadero was older, and then uh Susie was leather she was the younger little cousin or sister or whatever it was no. and, and she was yeah I, yes she are was you sure cousin. I am positive because she, oh, she was leather, leather okay. jumpsuit she wore the leather oh. jumpsuit okay so she was leather Tuscadero okay yeah anyway whoever it's, it was great I mean I was so little you know remembering the show is like another I can't believe another I remember mystery solved Facts. another mystery solved but yeah no she was she was great it was really good to meet her and yeah she's a real deal you know she was like the original rock chick there she is oh look at that hair oh awesome <laughs> that's yeah that's leather, vic leather going into old that's vic going into old files of our of our that's podcast, so cool which i'm really thankful for because he has all these photos stockpiled but he was able to find that rather quickly yeah well so done, it's like such like american nostalgia <laughs> well you the, the uk obviously holds something pretty uh special for you because that you said that the new york loose when when new york loose went over to the uk and you did this tour in 95 96 now was that the um the lineup that eventually became the album lineup in la or did that tour have something yeah. to do uh how did this band get you know put this band together and how did that all happen to get okay the UK tour so I always, I've always worked with Danny from day one, probably Danny Nordahl, from, who's in Faster Pussycat now, of um, the early days in New York Loose. So he's always been my right-hand man, or actually even wait, earlier standing days. on my left. Even, even in the early days, days Bridget, yeah. he, he, before that, he was always in our nemesis band. The Electric Angels had a nemesis band. Was it the Throbs? It was the Throbs. Throbs was, was a nemesis the nemesis band. And, and, the, oh. and the Throbs and Electric Angels were always going hand in hand because... Tony Visconti produced Electric Angels. So then what did the Throbs do? They got Bob Ezrin to produce their record. So okay. it was always like this one upmanship, but I think we one upped him with Tony Visconti because he's great and stuff. Oh like my that. God. But, of course. So Danny Nordahl, yeah. great guy. Amazing. Great guy. Man. Very tall, very tall bloke with glasses. <laughs> he's very tall. <laughs> <laughs> he always made me look like a midget on stage. <laughs> So you had him, and then you also had who else was in the band at that point when you went to? At that America? point, actually, it was uh, Gary Sunshine from Circus of Power. He's another fantastic guitar player. Absolutely. And um, and John Melville was the original guitar uh, drummer from uh, New York Loose, who I'm still very close to. And when I went back to New York recently, um, he played drums in in the in the band, and that was that was great. So 
Hi, John. Love John. Um, yeah, uh, but then then this is Pete Lloyd, who actually uh, was an English guy, and I think he somehow got into the band, and so he became, and then he came back uh, to uh, L.A. with us. So, okay. yeah. So 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 shortly after that UK tour, you you guys moved to L.A. And, uh, yeah, it was like they, it, there was sort of like, you know, ooh, the buzz is in LA. You got, you got to go to LA. I'm like, okay. So I think, um, I can't remember what labels kind of put us up. You know, when they used to do that kind of thing, they put you up in the hotel and you'd be in the, yeah. you know, the riot house and going crazy for like two weeks, you know. <laughs> when they had money and they <laughs> when they had money burned. and everything was paid for and you're like, okay, this is fun. Yeah. And, um, Little Richard would show up in the uh, in the uh, lobby all the time. Like all this wild stuff would happen, and um, yeah. So so that's when we did. That. And then we just started kind of playing in L.A. We got a manager in L.A. and we actually started all our tours from L.A. at that point. And then we just went out. But was there something to do with Foundations Forum that you get? Did you guys get your deal from that uh, music thing, or was that just another? That was just another thing we did. It was just sort of like on the schedule. Yeah. That was, I haven't thought about that in a long time. You guys were like, the, you definitely were the it band because I think you ticked all the boxes, right? You had this sort of punk rock vibe. You had um, a very cool attitude. It had New York, it had coast to coast appeal. And, uh, you know, as much as they say, oh, we don't need more you know, Alanis Morissette, you know, bands on this. They were obviously, every label wanted to have their- We you know, never Alanis were Morissette. like Alanis Morissette. I mean, I don't think no, New York no, Loose was at all like Alanis Morissette. All, it was just that I was- like a, it, But they wanted their art, they wanted their their female fronted rock band, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, they, yeah, so yeah, probably, yeah. Every, every label was going, well, where's our Alanis Morissette? If, even if, you know, they can't have two of them on the same label, yeah. we want our, you know. <laughs> one that we can put in the box and stuff like that yeah so but um i know that uh jerry finn mixed the record and, oh god uh, rest R.I.P. In peace. oh yeah R. I. P. what a jerry. sweet sweet man he was and what an amazing amazing engineer wow yeah. so lucky to work with him wow absolutely such a good vibe as well there's another such a good uh, vibe there's another coincidence we have bill i mean he's he, he worked with you on the entire album i think he mixed the yeah, album as well he mixed the album um, we were able to work with him as well um i was again when i do these uh scripts for the podcast I, I i really like to dig deep sometimes sometimes i go down the wrong rabbit hole but then i i saw you know i saw jerry's name and i was like oh let me go revisit jerry and see you know um just look at his body of work as well and, and he was he had been working with so many of those big big bands you know from the beginning with green day and then yeah one and eight two he kind yeah. of forged a sound absolutely um, and he did such a good job on year of the rat i mean obviously i as was and still am a huge green day fan for me that was just like i cannot believe that you were in the same room with billy joe armstrong <laughs> i was like oh my god oh and by the way me and billy joe armstrong have the same birthday that's great I know. Well, and and you have the same sort of uh, mutual friend in Jonathan Daniel, because Jonathan, we, while we were talking about you, you came up literally with Billy Joe in the same sentence. Get out. Like, really? Yes, because he was How? talking about, well, he was talking about, um, he was talking about you and what a great lyricist he thinks you are oh, so and, nice. and this, this and that. And then he, then he mentioned right in the next sentence that he's starting this tour, a stadium tour with, um, uh, basically with green day weezer and um fallout boy and yeah it's a stadium tour that starts it started on saturday <laughs> so he said you know i'm gonna i'm gonna email him a couple you know uh, a couple hours after the show and see how it went and stuff like that but oh um, my god wow him, and where are they gonna come to to europe no it's, it's a u.s it's a oh, u.s stadium US. tour and okay. so he says look if you start hearing, you know, any outbreaks coming from CNN on the CNN ticker, then you'll know how the tour is going, if it's going yeah. good or bad. So, yeah. you know, Gosh. everybody's everybody's dipping their toe back into touring. Yeah. Maybe, but we're getting a little bit apprehensive. We're I, Put it this way. People are excited. Alice Cooper is going out September, October with Ace Frehley. We're, we're really excited. But I'm telling people that I'm 
I'll believe it when I'm on stage. Mm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna overhype myself. I'm not gonna yeah. get too crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, you've lived in Europe now for a while. You've been through this yeah, twenty one uh, years. What? Twenty one years. Okay. I know. Okay, that's almost as that's longer than in me in Sweden. But you know, you've dealt with the pandemic European style, so we know what happens. And 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 unfortunately the 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 model is basically uh six to eight weeks later, what happens in Europe usually tends to uh happen in the States and stuff. So yeah. It's it's how has it been for you in during this pandemic? And in, in some ways I can imagine you, you know, being able to concentrate motherhood and music and having the time for both for a change, you know, um, do you think about going back out on tour in, in the UK and, and uh, doing shows and stuff? And how do you how does that make you feel? I would love to. Um, and now that my children are older, um, so BB's 15, and my son is going to be 18 in November, I feel like I've kind of done my time. <laughs> and and as far as just the full on dedication, they still need me, obviously, but in a, in a different way. Um, so I would like to, I would love to, I just have to see what happens, you know, I mean, I, it's, um, I'm sort of on my own here. Do you know what I mean? I'm sort of like, I don't have, I don't have a manager, I don't have anything at the moment, you know, so it's like, I'm, I'm just putting everything together and putting my team together. And, and we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I'd love to. I love playing live. Absolutely love it. Right. Well, you know what? Things can happen rather quickly, as, they, as we've seen. I mean, yeah. everything that happened with New York Loose did come together. When it did happen, it all came together like yeah. boom. And then mm. and you were, you know, everybody wanted a piece right there. And yeah. They wanted to sign it. And then it was good. And, and then things sort of. And then it wasn't good. Out. Yeah, then it wasn't good. But then you know what? You regroup and like you say, you reteam, and I love it. Um, yeah. I'm glad that you're hanging out with us right now. We're gonna go a little halfway break if that's cool. Okay. And and because BB inspired, because she's going to start playing bass. Um, I want to put on the commercial Vic that we're gonna have for System Twelve. And uh, anybody else that's aspiring out there to uh, pick up the guitar and learn guitar, whether it's myself or whether it's uh, our guest today, Bridget West, if you, she plays guitar as well. If you want to start playing guitar like us, it's not as hard as people think. Um, this is our halfway point. We have Bridget West on as our guest in the trenches. Vic, run that commercial, please, my friend. Welcome. Hello, folks. Ryan Roxy here. And thanks for watching and supporting all things we are doing over here at the RGA, otherwise known as the Roxy Guitar Army Headquarters. We'd like to invite you to start your own guitar journey with the most comprehensive and easy to learn course that's out there today, the System 12 Guitar Method. I've taken my 40 plus years of experience of playing guitar and combined it with some of the best tech and guitar life hacks to come up with a system that'll get you playing not just the guitar, but entire songs in a very short time. Check out the links provided and make sure to enjoy the lessons. And of course, enjoy the ride. Now, back to the show. Thank you for that. We have not run that commercial in a while, Vic. And you know why? I just realized I have a major eyeliner uh, <laughs> malfunction in that in that video. I don't know. It's like we we filmed it somewhere last, you know, in probably in the middle of the pandemic or something like that. And I, I hadn't put eyeliner on in a few months, and I I completely. <laughs> you need to do to do it. Yeah, you need to do like an eyeliner system where you learn how to put the eyeliner on. All right. I've got System 12. you got System Eyeliner. <laughs> I've been wearing eyeliner, eyeliner for a very long time. I could definitely do. I used to do my eyeliner in taxi cabs. I'm liquid eyeliner. Can you imagine? In a New York cab. And I used to get an <laughs> even line. <laughs> in a, yeah. That's going to um, sell. I'm that's talent. <laughs> but, um, hold on one second. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'll have to System Eyeliner's coming out as we speak. We got, we got guy top liner. working on it. Top man. I th honestly, as a, a guy liner. I'm a good. Guy I, I, could, I, I I put on guy liner pretty well. I think I've got the. Uh, I have I haven't been wearing it on the podcast lately, but I've been doing shows all this uh, month. I've been doing this uh, weekend shows. You know, acoustic stuff. Just playing yeah. acoustic guitar. Um, how do you feel about those types of shows? Have you have you you know do you have you ever done those shows where it's just you and acoustic guitar and you you flip I actually, the whole. 
Well, speaking of lockdown, I on my Facebook page you can watch um, a couple of videos that I recorded, just me and the guitar. Just I just just decided to do the live kind of thing. I, I was like Paul Unger actually. He just like, kick, kicks my ass all the time. Thank you, Paul, for everything you do for me. I'm so so grateful that you encourage me and 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 help me out so much. But um, so he's like Bridget. You know, it's lockdown. Everybody, come on, let, let's treat uh, let's treat everybody to some some just acoustic stuff. So yeah, I did Pale Blue. But Pal Blue Eyes by um, Velvet Underground. And I did a couple of my own songs. And so, yeah, you can see those on uh, my Facebook page. It's amazing that you met, mentioned Paul Unger. Because Paul we, Unger. Because hold on, folks. We have a huge history, Paul Unger. And that it just sort of dovetails us right into Fan of the Week because we thought about it. Uh -huh. Paul helped out so much with this week's script. Uh, Paul Unger has been... Uh, He's been helping me out with my, whether it's some of my, uh, my solo stuff. We talked about this before the, uh, before the podcast started where we put out solo records, but we call it a band name in a sense, be, but everyone knows that, uh, you're kind of, it's kind of your baby and your kind of yeah. thing, but you, you want it under, you want a band as well. You know, I, I always felt like Foo Fighters, everybody knows it's Dave Grohl's band. Yeah. But you know that you want a band name. And that's what I did with DPM. Perhaps that's what you had done with subsequent bands that you've done. Paul has been a very big supporter of that, Paul Unger. So much so that he helped out uh, not only with this week's um, script, and he's helped you out, he's helped me out. We thought we would make him the fan of the week. So congratulations, Paul Unger. Look. You are the, fa the fan of the week. And even Stanley is it happy. Or yeah, happy. yeah. That's, that's Frida and Stanley. They're all clapping in their own yeah. way. Everyone's clapping for, for Paul for right Paul, there. Yeah. And if you would like to become fan of the week, uh, all you have to do is stay tuned for uh, the ads that we put out and uh, what your task can be. Um, a lot of people helped out in the promotion of this uh, podcast today to promote the Bridget West episode. So thank you everyone that did that. Uh, Paul Unger, special thanks. You are a fan of the week and everyone else, you'll have your chance next week. What do you say? And so, Paul, thank you so much again. <laughs> which leads us up into what you're doing now, the main event, um, this uh, news would you say solo project is this just truly yeah. your first solo project and tell us about it well i guess so i mean i guess it's because it's me i'm kind of like not really i don't have to compromise anything on this i'm just doing what i want to do um yeah so it's just at, at the moment it's in production i'm still writing um for it i, I recorded three songs uh that are finished and um I could release as a single. I'm not sure I might. I might do that, uh, release everything as a single. Nothing's on Spotify yet. Um, nothing's nothing's done yet as far as that goes. But yeah, it's been, I've been going through a lot of stuff in, in my life lately that has been um, hard. You know, life is hard sometimes. Sometimes life is wonderful and then you go through these things where it's hard. So I'm just trying to, you know, kind of write and reflect and write and reflect and write and reflect. And um, I think I was really pleased that uh, Jonathan Daniels, um, you know, said something about my lyric writing because I, I do try and make that a big, big part of what I do as far as the art form and what I'm trying to express as an artist. So it takes a while sometimes, you know, to kind of, it's sort of undulating beyond, beyond, uh, below the surface and then it, and then it comes out in, um, in a song. But yeah, so it's going to be out. I don't. I'm not going to say what date. Hope, hopefully, sometime um, by the end of the summer. Hopefully. Do you plan it being an EP? Do you plan it being a full length uh, LP? What do you plan on it? I'm planning it on being an EP because I'm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Otherwise, it's going to take too long, and I've already started to promote it. So I'll just probably record a couple more songs and put it out. Do you feel that the the song "Can You Talk" will be? Uh one of them that yes uh, i do i yeah. do feel that way yes i feel it's gonna be one of them. And, and, that, <laughs> and that has that song in particular has 
<laughs> part of what you're dealing with, right? The, 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 yeah, the that sort of act of meeting somebody online. Yeah, or exactly. How to That's communicate with that person. Totally. Yes, I'm going to do a seven inch run. I'm going to do some some uh, some vinyl as well. Yes, um, it's about it was it was actually about the pandemic. It was about nobody could see each other, and so my, a lot of sort of things started where you're kind of like texting everyone. You know, you're like, oh, we're gonna. But then I got like so fed up. Like, let's just have a conversation. It was it was kind of like we live in this sort of text world where we don't we we kind of lose. Lo lost the art of sort of just picking up the phone and talking to people, you know? And so that's kind of what it's about. It's about sort of making an actual connection with somebody around lockdown, around that, how, I mean, it was pretty severe here, wasn't it, in the, in Europe? Um, it was pretty intense. Not in Sweden. You'd be surprised. In Sweden, it was like a completely different model. I know the UK really? was, com yeah, oh, it was 180 we were. degrees. And, oh, and my God. And it still is right now, right? I mean, you're dealing with it even as we speak, right? The, the possible, you know, future lockdowns. Because yes, of always. It's right. always, exactly. It's always sort of, sort of like, you know, threatening to come over the threshold of the doorstep again. And so we're, you know, so yeah, so it's sort of a, a song about, a song about connection, a song about trying to, to reach out when you are so isolated. Okay, okay. And um, the way that people can help get this album out quicker or sooner and they can get a, maybe even an advanced copy. I'm not sure everything that you're offering, but uh, you have set up a GoFundMe page, right? I have. Um, yes. And if we have that link of Vic, if we can put up any of those links right now and you want to talk to Bridget about it, um, you're, you're pretty active up on, uh, on social media. So uh, are these the best ways to get in touch with it? Uh, yeah, they are. That's just the or, best or just way talk to, to Stanley it. or one of your dogs. Oh, and, uh, sorry. Hold on. Come here. Selena. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Baby, can you? Does thanks. anybody speak uh, canine? If anybody speaks canine out there, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have a translator. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. I, I am a, yeah, sorry. I'm always around animals. It's like, you know, it's part of the way it is. Um, but yes. They're telling you to buy, to, to go to your phone, yeah. GoFundMe. They're, exactly. They're saying, you know, go to my phone, GoFundMe. Let's put up those links one more time and you can yeah. uh, tell everybody that's listening on the audio broadcast how to get in touch with you. And yeah. So at Bridget West Music on Instagram, at Bridget West Music on Facebook, and there's a GoFundMe, Bridget West New Music. Um, yeah. So I'd really appreciate it. You know, um, it's it's an expensive hobby. And um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to. Uh, to get some support on that. So thanks guys. There you go. Well, obviously from supporting her solo stuff, um, you never want the truth to get in the way of a good story. And we, we get this segment by the way, uh, from Alice Cooper, who is, uh, one of your, uh, earlier influences, obviously. Absolutely. Um, he would like to say, never get the, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So we have a few things. Um, we already went through the Madonna connection, and that was a fact, no doubt about it. You do have one. Uh, <laughs> we already talked about uh, myself playing on your earlier demos yes. back in the old school New York days. So that, Bridget, was a fact. That's a fact. Uh, and uh, we also talked, we met your daughter. This is, this is a, yeah. I just walked by. <laughs> yeah, this that was actually a, a fanzine. I had a fanzine called Chow Manhattan, and we it was sort of a, a, to update all the fans when we left New York. Um, and you know, so we we would send that out by the you know by the post. I mean, and and just sort of keep everybody updated. And and Paul Paul Lunger helped with that. And look, Alice Cooper, it's us and Alice yeah, Cooper in the back corner there. Thing, yeah, yeah. We got to do a show with Alice Cooper. I we got to do that. a show with Alice Cooper, which was so incredible for me. It was just like a dream. Well, you know what. Did uh, Bridget West ever have a fanzine? <laughs> Obviously, that was fact, and that's just, fact. We, we just figured it out. Yeah. I don't know why it came up as a fact. It wasn't even on my script as one, but it's a fact. <laughs> it's a Bridget fact. West did have it's, one. it's called Chow Manhattan after the film um, about Edie Cedric um, by Andy Warhol. I love yeah. it. Edie Cedric, the one, the the, the 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 song made famous by the cult Edie. Edie. It's correct. about her. Mm -hmm. you're correct. Yeah, you're, you okay. are correct. You're correct. Yes. <sighs> okay. Here's Another New York female icon. Here's one I want to talk about because uh -oh. I, I, I don't have it anywhere. I have two more, two uh, Never Let the Truth Get in the Way of a Good Story. Okay. Um, 
and I need your opinion. I need your honest, honest opinion. All right. Was I almost in New York loose? Yes. Yes, it's a fact. It is a fact. And I have brought up this story before. It is a fact. I so wish I could turn back time. <laughs> but you know, in 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 retrospect and being Monday morning quarterback and look back, I mean, I was very lucky to to jump on the Alice Cooper um bus, literally the Alice Cooper bus. Yeah. Uh, in the Alice Cooper train for that one year tour that I was offered. Um, it wasn't everybody in your camp that thought that that was a good idea for me to be in the Alice Cooper band, which, which I'm, I'm, I'm thankful in a way that I stuck to my guns and said, look, I think, you know, yeah, well, I'm going to play with Alice. It's going to happen. Um, but you had an, you had a certain A&R guy that was saying that was, this is not a good career move. This is you a know, total bad career. I don't move remember that. I mean, I'm really sorry. I don't even. You it's, were distanced it, from it. Why would you, well, you weren't part I, of I it. I didn't, I wasn't. I, and I don't even know what happened there. I, I really don't. But no, it anyway. Was just, it was just, a, it was just one of those things where someone says, you know what? You're making a career decision. And I said, I, well, you know what? I love Bridget. I love Alice. I think he's going to tour more than one year. And I, and, and that's, that, that's where I'm going. Yeah. And, um, that's fine. No problem. But I'm glad we like always, cause I do cite this story every once in a while. I, I and I never say the, the name of the band. I just say it was a, it was a prominent band. It was, it was a band that had a huge record deal yeah. and I had to make a choice at that point. And wow. I, Can you for, imagine for, though? We would have, anyway, you, you know what? It's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> never too late. To it's jam never again. too late to jam never again. Never too late to jam again. And honestly, I'm putting myself out there right now. I would love to play. If you if you've got a, any sort of guitar work that yes. you would like me to sort of maybe do a little solo here and there. Definitely, I, I, I do. A little, I dance a little. I play a little solo guitar. I would love to be part of the new Bridget West. Oh my solo God, that's amazing. Well. Okay, right. yeah, I'm going to take you up on, on that. Tape saying that, right I know. I got proof. I got proof. <laughs> well, speaking of jumping on the Alice Cooper tour bus. Uh, this is one story that the fact or fiction never let the uh, truth get in the way of the good story. Okay. I would like to talk about the infamous uh, New York loose tour bus fire. Is that oh, fact or fiction? Is that, that is, fact or fiction? That is a fact. Another fact, Vic. Another that is fact. A fact. Please break it down to what happened. What tour were you I on? What the hell was happening? And how that did was this all go? Did your tour bus burn down? Flipping burnt down. So to the I wheels. Mean, it was this, yeah, it was sort of like a like a like a skeleton, um, metal skeleton on wheels of a bus. Oh, shit. Um, it was awful. I mean, so I don't know how many people out there have been on a tour bus, but imagine um being in a very very small space i mean they're very small it's like you know there's like a like a corridor and then you have the bunks on either side and then you have like a little room in the back i mean that's what we had anyway it was a very very old bus um and we took turns because we always had to have a hotel room to um shower and all that kind of stuff so you know a day room yeah a day yeah. room exactly so we took turns sleeping in the day room i Thank God it was my night to sleep in the hotel room. However, I woke up uh, about three in the morning to the sound of my um, my uh, tour manager called Aaron Dilks. Um, I don't know if you've ever come across him. Unfortunately, he's he's not with us anymore. Amazing. Worked with Manson for a long time. And anyway, so he um, knocked on the door and said, Bridget, we have a big problem. The bus, the bus is on fire. And... <laughs> I was like, bus, oh my God. The bus, the bus is on fire. It's, it roof, was like the, bus. the roof. It was like on fire, the whole thing. Anyway, so I go out and I I see the bus in flames, you know, kind of smoke and fire coming out of the windows. And I'm sorry to say this, guys, but my cool, my sort of very tough rock and roll guitar band pretty much in tears because it was so traumatic. I mean, they had to, they actually had to escape out of the windows. They had to smash windows with the guitars to get them out. And then they smashed the windows. And you know what happens when, you know, fire hits air. It was like, I mean, Holy I, shit. 
was, yeah, we all watched Backdraft. Yeah, or, it's like I was Backdraft. Said we watched. It was draft. horrible, and one of them never came out again on the road with us. Our, our lovely um, roadie, he was called Bull. He would not come out again. He was so freaked out. Um, yeah, everything burnt down. Everything burnt. All of our equipment, all of my T-shirts, all of my clothes, everything gone. So we show up at the, we were on the tour with Marilyn Manson at the time. So and it was Marilyn Manson and, uh, and us. Oh crap. That it was a just a picture of the two of you. Yeah. 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 So that was the tour. So we, um, it was for the Antichrist superstar tour and yeah. So we, we should, I had nothing to wear that night. I had to kind of raid <laughs> Marilyn Manson's wardrobe and he was like, he was like putting stuff on me. I'm like, okay, great. You know, it was, Absolutely. Like we were, we all smelled like smoke. Nobody wanted to be near us. We all smelled like, like a fire. BB, please deal with the dogs. I'm sorry about that. I wish we could have Don't edited that out. It's, it's, you, um, know what the, you know what? We know we, there's no editing. This is, I know this is like real life guys, real life. That's the beauty of it. And yes. we'd love to see BB walking back and forth, <laughs> taking care of the dogs. This is yeah. real life rock and roll. And real we're life. hearing about it's, this Fiction or fact, not fiction the fact. Of, of of the uh of, of the bus the fire. New York yeah. bus fire. Now it was horrible. Did, did they ever find the cause of it? Are you sure yes. Slash Slash was not on the bus? Are, Slash was not on the one? bus. Okay. <laughs> In fact, I mean I, I used to kind of like joke about it and say that Manson, you know, got got some petrol and kind of, you know, like doused the bus and lit it on fire. Mm. But he didn't do that. What happened is um there, it was very cold and there was an, a space heater and we had this really, really not very bright um, bus driver who decided that he was going to plug this thing into a, um, one of those, um, what do you call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. electrical uh, strip. A oh, strip, so yeah, exactly. A strip. Instead of into the mains and it started a fire and it was an electrical fire and that's what happened. And Damn. Yeah, it was really traumatic. I mean, things were just never the same after that. So. <laughs> hey, what's happening, Stanley? It's all right, Stanley. Sorry, well, it's all no, bit chaotic. No, no, it's no problem. We'll get we'll get them all airtime now because we already got BB <laughs> on the on the podcast. We might as well get Stanley. Which one was that? Is that Ariel? That's it's Stanley, and we've got Alfred, and we've got uh, Frida. But yeah, they're they're making a lot of noise. Bring them in. And I'm just saying Ariel for no reason. Well, Ariel, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, so that's yeah, I it was, and thank God everybody lived. There was no, but you know, they had to jump out the window, and you know, like on a tour bus, that the windows are not like low down to the ground. It's like a what no, no, no. a fifteen foot drop, maybe. No doubt. Right? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, so depending they have to... on what, what bunk you're at, and and it and and obviously the windows are the, the higher bunks. So yeah, you got at least a ten foot drop. I mean, for, for Danny Nordahl, who's so that's tall, nothing. He probably just stepped out. <laughs> exactly. He just probably just stepped out. <laughs> it was like a giraffe <laughs> just going up. <laughs> just put one leg down. Yeah. Uh, um, do you have a picture of a giraffe or Danny Nordahl? Either yeah. one would work. It same would same thing. <laughs> That's, that's me and Didi Ramon, actually. Yes, uh, yes. That's me and Didi when I was uh, very young. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, go back to that picture, please. Yeah, that's me and Didi Ramon. He was in his his Didi King phase then. You can see he has the mullet and stuff. And that's me, very young. I was working at um, a gallery called the Psychedelic Solution in uh, New York. Yeah. And the gentleman, and you go back to that picture right there. And the gentleman to the right is up to no good. He's, He's up to absolutely no, no up to no good. That good. guy was up to no good. He was always tripping, always tripping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, Vic, right? can, you, can you close up on that picture? That's He's up dark. To no damn good. That's, That's New York dark, right? You had those guys around. They were like always on drugs, massive amounts of drugs. And they were like up to no good. No damn good. <laughs> no damn New York good. Dark. Well, the band could have been New York, New York Dark. New York Dark. The New York too. Dark. Yeah. The New York Dark. <laughs> uh, New York Loose. That's fun too as well. I love it. Mm. I love the name. Um, Thank you. One last fact or fiction. Oh, God. Never let okay. Get in the way of a good story. Well, it's not my question. It wasn't in the script, but I got a private message from our producer. So if you love the question, folks, this is all Vic. If you don't like the question, don't blame me. But, Bridget, mm -hmm. were you ever known as a vampire girl? Mm hmm. Fact. Another That's fact. a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Yes. I had it. Me and uh, Sean Yassault had a, had a, from White Zombie had a band called The Famous Monsters. And our first, oh, that's us hanging out in Paris. 
Um, and our first as uh, um, our first EP, no, it was a, first, a seven inch, a seven inch single that we did for Estrus Records, which, um, yeah, there we are. Nin 1994, right? Um, well, our first one Rhonda. was even earlier because we did a seven inch single on Estrus Records, which is a, I don't know if you're familiar with like Man or Astro Man. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So that, that guy in the middle is Bob Burt from Sonic Youth. Hey, Bob, if you're listening. <laughs> so yeah, so that's me as a vampire girl and that's Bob Burt from Sonic Youth as Frankie Stein, and then Devil Doll was was uh, Sean, and it was just a, almost like a an instrumental surf band. And then we made this one, so then See, we had a Godzilla I lady. Cross all, when I say you cross all genres, <laughs> when you just said experimental surf band, because I was like, I, I, I knew punk rock, I knew guitar-driven, <laughs> straight-ahead pop, I yeah. knew you know the Americana vibe as well. I had never heard of experimental uh surf rock yeah it was there fun it was. it was fun that was really fun we did that record in um in new orleans actually we, we recorded that in new orleans and i that's where i met um john from uh wilco and i met Sat pat sansone from from wilco and became an absolute wilco fanatic after that so yeah i love i love the band wilco there's certain it must songs be known. that you can listen to wilco and you can just become an instant fan with it i think yeah um, in Tokyo um it's just it's just like you you sometimes they'll come on a playlist that I'll put on and I'll just be listening dozing off in in the bus or whatever and I'll put out a song that I like and then and then just go on the radio and then I'll you know more songs will come on more songs will come on in that sort of genre but when a Wilco song comes on I kind of like go right right it's yes. like when a Wilco song comes on it's like there's something really special going on I know. I don't know how they manage it. I think it's absolutely incredible. Did your relationship with Wilco did that uh, shift you a little bit in the in the Americana? Yeah, because I was Sandusky. And, I was writing you're already in New Orleans, right? Yeah, um, I was writing. The, I wrote most of the Sandusky this this record, the Americana Dream, in New Orleans. Um, and is that you I, as well? No, no, it isn't. It's just a, a random photo. I just thought it was really cute. Wait, you had um, six. You had six brothers and five sisters to choose yeah. from with childhood photos, and you pick some random. Kid. I know, but it was right. so cute. I had to. I was just. I don't even know where I found it. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, I've always loved country music. In fact, I think you can probably, if you really listen hard to "You're the Rat," you can hear my country. And something like "Broken" is just basically a, a really. It's a hyped up country song, isn't it? So, yeah, I've always. I love that kind of just the craft of it do you know what i mean i i and i but i've always loved sort of you know heart you know metal and 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 alice cooper was a big fan of mine do you i have a question for you do you know that song um spit when i say um it made me feel so dirty it made me feel so clean do you know i say the word clean exactly like he says clean in no more mr nice guy wow you went to you you studied the way his depiction yeah. of clean yes. and went, yes what line so, is it in, in that nice guy so it um no more mr clean when he says no, no more mr clean, clean. Yeah. right yeah. yeah so when i sing my song and i i say um it made me feel so dirty it made me feel so clean, clean. you see there it is, there that's, it is. Fact. that's another fact jack <laughs> we just made we just made that one up that's yeah because but it. there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of that in my lyrics and I'm, I'm always waiting for the fan that can kind of start to put it all together because i have put the dots together put the dots together i have a every pretty much every that's song nice. i write there's something about another song Oh yeah, right. There's something I, I about love doing that with lyrics as, as, right? as, as well because, yeah. I mean, the amount obviously, you know, perhaps for you, the the MC Five, Iggy, Alice, those those influences. For me, it's the same with Cheap Trick. So I I do have oh, Cheap yeah. Trick references yes. all around. Uh, but I've also put in sometimes bands. You know, obviously bands that have influenced me and are great bands, but I'll I'll put in a whole entire melody line or a uh, um, some sort of the way you say it, the way the, uh, the, the original somebody band says something, yeah, says something like the police. I have a song on on the first solo record that I put out that has a major 
like I just cop the police right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. Or, or the cars or something like oh, that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're all I've got tonight or whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, when you say that, if you're doing that with your lyrics, I it's it's not at all because there's a difference between plagiarism and and ripping something off or just paying homage to yeah i've always saying, yeah do you get it do you get yeah, that do you, does anybody this? understand that and no one's ever taken me up on i think the only person was renfield do you remember renfield well obviously brian nelson and he brian nelson your brian nelson yeah rest in peace rest he, in peace babe amazing guy that uh he was actually the one that uh really really championed me for the alice cooper gig as well he was always He's, very supportive yeah and i know that he ran your uh he ran your he ran my fan club Blues fan club for, mm -hmm. for a long time right he did so, yeah so what did he challenge you on brian no but he didn't challenge me but he he um, he got that i oh, said that that clean thing you know when i said when i put the maybe he, he was like that's that's like the way alice says clean and miss no more mr nice guy and i was like do you like to run my fan club? <laughs> I was like, you really get it. Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> so, so yeah, you're so saying that there's more Easter eggs to be found. For, there's a lot of fans. Easter eggs. Yes, yeah. there are yeah. Easter eggs, fans. If you want to um, really listen to other things that um, are. Uh, sorry, we're having a dog fight here. Uh, BB. Betting starts right now. Yeah, Everybody the betting the starts. We got the Rhodesian <laughs> Ridgeback. We got the Labrador. <laughs> And they're it's dancing. Like, yeah. yeah, I think they're dancing. But they're making a lot of noise with their nails. So okay. yeah. So Phoebe's going to deal with that. Background. Yeah, she's going to deal with that. Phoebe needs to be in a band like yesterday. She already has to have a band together. And, and I'm telling you, <laughs> she's already she's already starting. She's already on the trending on YouTube, or whatever it is. Whatever yeah. the kids do. <laughs> do you even trend on YouTube? Is that even possible? We'd like to trend on YouTube. In fact, if you're watching us on YouTube right now and watching this live dog fight, please hit that subscribe button. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is so unprofessional. Us. It's not unprofessional. This is oh a dog God. show. It's <laughs> become dog show, rock show. Big dog show, if you will. I love it. Right. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, good. We've separated them now. Uh, wow. And breathe. That was big. That was big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I hope everybody likes dogs out there. Well, you know what? Oof. They do. And they've loved having you. In fact, dog, dog live, live stream. stream. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. Well, folks, if you if you love dogs and you love uh, this amazingly cute puppy love, you're going to love our next week's guest because on next week's In the Trenches, we will have the puppy dog of rock and roll we like to consider, Carrie Kelly. Uh, oh, there you go. Carrie wow. Kelly will be our guest next week. So I'm sure we'll be talking more Alice Cooper. I'm sure we'll be talking uh, much more Night Ranger. So many bands that Carrie has been in. Yeah, and again, cool. I, it's quite cool being able to have um, a lot of people that uh, we've sort of played with throughout the years come on to the podcast and be able to find out a little bit more about them. You know? Great. It's been great. <sighs> well, before we leave and before yeah, we wrap things I'm up, good. I, mm. I want people to, uh, and, and you know, what's funny is that the minute that we sort of, sort of wrap things up, your internet just became high def and like Vic is like, really? Our producer's like, going, I know I'm not, now I'm no longer in the seventies porno movie. No, I'm actually no longer penthouse diffused I'm, lens. I'm, yeah. You know? <laughs> but although, <laughs> Hold on, there you go. Eric. That's Hold a bit of a penthouse. On. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, that Great. where did he get that photo? Because that's without the the text on top of it. Wow, that's uh, like the original photo. My God, Vic, I, you're good. You're really good. Look, well, I even have Vic the baby good. set. Vic is, Vic is good, but guess what? Paul <laughs> Unger is is very good as oh, well. Oh, SNL, it there it is. Coffee talk. With five, Madonna five, five, in the center. Do Madonna is yeah, yeah. It, it all wraps together. It, it does. all is. It's one all coming thing. together. Well, if people do want to sort of uh, find out more and more and more about Bridget West and support the upcoming EP, uh, the best way to do that is at Bridget yeah West at Bridget Music West Music Instagram. Instagram yeah and um, at Bridget West Music on Facebook and um, GoFundMe Bridget West New Music. 
Yeah, and if you're listening, it's I spell my name in a really weird way. So I spell it B-R-I-J-I double T E. So yeah, I've had that problem all week trying to Google your name and going it every single time. It's like I know. But but, but then again, did that name happen naturally or did you do a little bit of a Hollywood rock and roll? I did a little Hollywood rock spelling. and roll treatment. Yeah, okay. I did a Hollywood so, rock and roll treatment. So, so the real name, when did when did you change it? At what at what time? What year? Well, did you change the spelling? Uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, I thought I I think I've always um, uh, spelled it like that, but people have misspelled it. Well, okay. I was Ryan Roxy R O X Y at seventh grade, but I moved down to Los Angeles and I quickly saw that there was a club called R O X Y, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the name of a nightclub. I changed it to R O X I E. Because it's ah. very, it's very Los Angeles to go I E instead of it. So yeah. when did B R I J uh, I T T E become your name? Was it early, or was is that your born name? Yeah. It, well, it's not exactly my born name, but I think what I wanted, I, as I, I quite like the idea of the Trinity of the three dots. Again, it's a numerology thing. Trinity, but is there an eleven somewhere? So maybe the double T's if you take yes, the Yes, yeah, numbers. maybe. There's an 1111 because you got a J, an I, and a T, and a T. And then you got... 11, Heaven's and it's Gate. An 11, yeah, see, isn't that's that, it. Isn't that Heaven's Gate's numbers? Yeah. Not, not, no, not, well, not it, the cult, folks. Not, no. We're not telling you to go into the cult. <laughs> but 1111 yeah. is, like is supposed to be Heaven's Gate's numbers. Because there was a time, Bridget... When I would look at my at uh, my 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 watch or whatever, I guess back in those days before everybody had iPhones, um, I would look and it would always be eleven eleven. Mm -hmm. Was that telling me something? Yeah. What was it that me? means that you have well, I I've always had that as well. Like the number eleven has followed me around my whole life, and I and it it is a message. I mean, I don't I'm not like completely whack and totally one of these weird spiritual people, but I do kind of feel there is something around the, the uh, number 11, especially if it's 11, 11. And supposedly um, it's sort of, you're kind of in, in kind of sync with the universe. So, you know, whatever you're doing then or whatever you're feeling, then you're sort of in sync with the universe and that's, and that's good. You know, it's just a really good sign. I hope I'm in sync with the universe now because I, was been looking at my watch lately and it just says 9 11. that's not good <laughs> no oh no <laughs> ouch all right ouch. Well, i gotta get yeah. back into the 11 11. Uh, yeah once you start no thinking gonna... about it you will but i'm i'm sure there are many people out there that have this number in fact michael alago i don't know if you know who michael alago is yeah yeah Re so your company guy as well right yeah yeah so he actually put something on the facebook and he was like I don't know what it is, but every time I'm looking at the the clock, it's eleven eleven. I'm like, Michael, this is a thing. It, it happens. It does. It's it, it happens to it people. You, it's a good sync. All right, it's I want to get really back good. to eleven eleven. It's really and, good. And no one's gonna think that you know you're not a crazy cat lady. You're a sophisticated dog lady. That's I I love cats too. Intuitive. And I well, I loved cats too. We're, 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 I love we cats. Oh, look, there's cats. a kitty cat in that picture. <laughs> That's He's on the crabs funny. table. Um, yeah. Where, where did you go where you had an actual craps table just to take a photo of? Because it's not a, at a casino. Was it some no, it was at Oligard's house or who's it was in it was at a at um at a, a producer's house in LA and he had a whole bunch of pinball machines and he had a craps table and he had like a secret door and it was crazy and I can't remember his name. Yeah, it wasn't Mike it wasn't Jerry Finn because I actually went up to Jerry's Finn. He had a hot tub. And I don't want to tell you about that. So that's for a whole nother episode. Yeah. Hot tub stories are usually go one way. Um, but no, um, <laughs> it was um guy that did, uh, God, what did he do? I don't know. I can't remember now. One of these like hair band metal. See, you're, you're having nice. the same moment that I had uh, trying to remember Susie Quattro. That's what you're doing right now. I'm having See, that moment. You're trying he, he, he produced what, the Flops album. album. The no, he didn't. Well, he didn't. He didn't produce our album, but he produced many of the hair bands. I think he like produced like Winger and all these, you know, hair band. I know who it is. You know who know, it is. Uh, yes, What's it's his on the name? Tip of my tongue. Well, our chat will help us out with that. Who produced um, all? Uh, oh God, I, I, Big, I know exactly all the hair bands, right? I think yes, did he do yes. right? That rat. guy. I think he did. Rat. rat. He did rat. 
that guy. Yeah, okay. It was at his house. Coming up one second. I'm yeah. Let me see. He was Let weird, that guy. <laughs> warrant. Yes, he did warrant. Yes, he did. I think he did do warrant. Bo Hill. No, no, not Bo Hill. Bo Hill. But that no. was the guy, though. That's the no, guy but it wasn't him. It was not. someone else. I don't know. Who put, you know what? Of course it was Scotty Hagen that put out Bo Hill because Scotty Hagen uh, runs a record uh, label, Bellyache Records, as Tommy would like to refer to as Bellachi Records. But <laughs> Bellyache Records, he knows all those producers. So, yeah, I thought it was Bo Hill, too. That's what I thought. No, but, not uh, Bo Hill. It no, no, it wasn't. Maybe um, it was the anyway, other guy. it was yeah, the other guy. You know what? This podcast <laughs> is not about him. No, it's this not. Podcast is Who not cares? About his, but he had a crab stable. <laughs> but he did. He had a crab yes, stable yes, yes. Cat. Daniel Granzini. That's it. It's Rick Browdy. Oh my God, that was Rick Browdy. Yes, he produced Poison. Po- okay, Poison. Same thing, yes. right? Warrant, Poison, <laughs> Winger. I mean, you know. <laughs> There's our soundbite. We got it. Bridget West going on. Sorry. <laughs> Big shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> it it might have taken an hour and 20, but we got our soundbite there. That's okay. No. So how does it feel to be in a huge uh, like Twitter war with Rick Browdy now? Is, is, is there, is oh, there God. Am I? Is that is that just what happened? Oh, my well, God. I'm sorry, Rick. Entire- Mostly hair metal. You and hair metal are just like warring at each other. Oh, are we? Are we? I, I don't know. I won't pay attention. I won't even look. Um, I love hair metal. Uh, no, it was really good hair metal. Um, the hair was really good. <laughs> the hair was good. <laughs> Some of the songs Which is were ironic great. because Rick Browdy does not have any. No, he doesn't. Uh, in a good way. I mean, he's he went bald early, so it's fine because you know we're all he, we're all going there. It's he was folks. living vicariously through the hair bands, but he Absolutely. was so great. He was such a nice host. Oh my God. We had such a good time at his, his party. But he then had, we realized a black cat and a, and, and a, and a, and a crap table. Crap and table. like, I'm, I love pinball. That's the other thing. I'm a massive pinball fan. And uh, he had tons of like old, really cool vintage pinball machines. He had definitely had the kiss one. And he had the Adams family one, but then it was sort of like, there was all these women around and you're like, who I don't really know any of these women. And I was like, Bridget. So like, m- like any of the girls that o- are over there and like have a short skirt, they're all hookers. So that's that, you know? Yeah. So it was I'm so weird shocked. back a then. It was like record producer. I know. I'm thinking a studio. I'm, and, and I'm like sitting house? there like drinking a drink, talking to somebody. I'm like, Oh hi. And they're like, yeah, that, well, that was like a hooker. I'm like, really? Anyway, I was quite innocent then. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You've always been innocent. like I said, I know I was always in like this dirty world and being so innocent. But Rick Browdy, yeah, he, he was a great host, especially Much to the boys, if you know what I is. mean. Now you guys made up. See, see, uh, well, produced- we, we started a controversy. <laughs> you guys had a conflict and then you worked it out. And he passed Rick a pussy cat for any of it. Rick, is oh, like, Rick Browdy. What did I do? I <laughs> know. Oh, no, he, he was a great host. He had a great house, great party. And he was he was brilliant. Well, Rick Browdy has commandeered and taken over this podcast. But Sorry. You know, he'll be our next guest after Carrie Kelly. Why not? Carrie Kelly will be next week. And I'm sure Carrie will have plenty of Rick Browdy stories to talk about. Yes. I love it. <laughs> how does Vic get all these rare pictures? Well, this week we it's have to how, thank yeah, how the- our fan of the week, Paul Unger, because he sent a lot of those photos Did in. We oh, really thanks, do Paul. want to thank Look, There he is. There's Paul. Paul. He's, and his uh, blue lips. We had a we had a Rocky Horror sort of ish T shirt, a New York loose T shirt. We did blue lips instead of uh, red lips, and it, it had okay, New so York loose red shirts. Yeah, see go back to that picture yeah, yeah. Rick, if you can. So you go back to that picture. Yeah. yeah so that's it. a you see it's the Rocky Horror mouth in blue, and then we had New York loose written in the blood like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I love it was it. sort of yeah, that's a it, cool shirt. And if you can see on the right, go back to the picture, please, Vic. If you can see on the on on the right. Um, That's I'm wearing you. a scarf, um, but no, uh, his his shirt that he has on that was my first, uh, the only dad's porno mag promo shirt that we ever put out. Um, we called ourselves, and I just took a picture of a random, like you took a picture of the child for your Sandusky album. Yeah, I, I took a picture of a random motocross rider because I thought it was really cool. It's and very cool. Dad's porno mag, America's band. So there you go. And I we love made it. it. On Ringer T-shirts, it was back. I in love 19... Ringers. Remember? Remember Ringers? It was like such yeah. a little... better times, huh? Better times. Better times. There was Ringer T-shirts. It was better times. Oh, that's wow. me and my Spider-Man T-shirt. Wow. Do you still got that shirt? 
No, I wish I did. I really wish I did. You, but you I, could, I, you could uh, take your whole wardrobe and sort of donate it to to, to your daughter, Bibi, and she would like have the coolest friggin'. I, it's it's it is done. It has been done. Yeah. You know yeah, what's funny? She's, it's, it's, it's done on my side too. I have a 15 year old. I, I, we're again, the coincidences just keep coming, uh, Bridget, because I have a 15 year old daughter who just turned 16, and uh, uh, I have a 18 year old son who's going to turn 19. So that's uh, crazy. Yeah, well, it's yeah, the same. So, yeah, it is, and and it, it's uh, Lennon and Natasha Grace. Natasha Grace nice. is, um, but but she Natasha Grace borrows a lot of my clothes, and she always goes. She goes. Papa, can I, can I borrow a shirt from you? And I'm oh, like, cute. okay. Which one? And guess what one of her favorite shirts is? And I swear what? to God, this is the real thing. It's a D-Generation, uh, original D-Generation, uh, black on black logoed shirt that uh, we got when uh, I was touring with Gilby Clark and D-Generation was our sport act. Oh my Still God. Same, same shirt. There can you, you say hi to Gilby from me? Of course, Do you yeah, I don't, to he might be watching right now. Gilby, oh my God! Oh, Hi, Clark Gilby. <laughs> wow, wow, Gilby um, was such a nice guy. I mean, always such a nice guy. I just thought of him and thought, my God, what a wonderful human he is. So hi, Gilby. It's nice to see so, see you again. Ish. There you go, Gilby Clark. Uh, big shout out from Bridget West, and yeah. you know, anybody that's watching can watch uh, our episode that we have on Into Trenches with Gilby Clark. Oh, and I here's will. Another little fun fact, Bridget. Guess who produced uh, one of Gilby Clark's albums? Julian Rick, Raymond. Rick Browdy. Rick Browdy. Rick oh my Browdy. God. I thought we could go a whole. I thought we could That's go a whole. a whole episode without mentioning Julian Raymond's name, but he was the one that said he was the one that. He said, was the one. That he said, said that to you. That made you're making a career decision. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So now, wow. so now I'm in the now I'm in the Twitter war with Julian, even though we're both huge Cheap Trick fans. Yeah. We both love cheap. I mean, he's a huge Cheap Trick fan. Everyone knows that I'm a huge Cheap Trick fan. You're a Cheap yeah. Trick fan. Who's oh, not? God, yeah. I mean, I used to roller skate to you know you want I want you to want me you know as a teenager, <laughs> all around the roller rink. So we're not fun. talking we're not talking rollerblades, folks. New schoolers. We're talking about four. We're wheels. talking actual four wheel roller roller That's skates. It. You know, at the roller rink. Leather I was boots. like. A, yeah, beige, yeah, totally. Beige or white? Beige, white, or black? I had white ones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had I had I had a black a pair with blue wheels. That was my roller rink one. Dublin roller rink. What was your roller rink of choice? Carolina roller rink in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun. Yeah, every Saturday. I I think I I mean the the the, the PA system was so good. The the music sounded so good. It was like Charlie Daniels band. It was you know it was like <laughs> that's the country that right? came out. Yeah, that's it was like Devil went down to Georgia, da, da, da. and then it was um. Why uh, is that it was that when it, some music girls sounds better if you're going in a sort of uh, in, in a, a circle, I don't know, or mm. clock, counterclockwise uh, sort of motion. It just sounds better. Big you speakers, go... yeah. Uh, and you're just moving and trucking along. And it was uh, the other song, the other record that came out then uh, at that time was the Rolling Stones "Some Girls," which, if you think about the lyrics to "Some Girls," you couldn't do that today. Let's let's just be clear. I mean, that yeah. the lyrics to that song are like, whoa. Anyway. <laughs> What a great album, though. And so I remember, like, Shattered, you know, roller skating to Shattered and, you know, yeah. Every song in the key of A. Every Was single it? song on really? side A. Yeah, oh. I think side side A, my, there might have been a key change. There might have been a couple in D and E on side B. But if you listen to side A, I believe every single song is side A. Is isn't is an a, a. Yeah, well they don't you, sound they don't all uh, sound the same i mean it's a brilliant it's album different styles different different styles i love it you know yeah I mean, man in this last five minutes we've just gone all over the place Fucking bow, 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was going to happen eventually Rick rowdy to rolling stones i love <laughs> it man. I, yeah you know what they need to bring back the roller rink that is the best thing and then that's where i learned how to play pinball because you know when it, when it was sort of you know like couples only and i didn't have a boyfriend you have to you know come off the rink and then you play pinball yeah how yeah, fun just, what a wow what a great place to kind of hang out and oh, loved love the roller rink did you yeah. know that Alice Cooper put out a pinball machine a couple of years ago? And have you ever played it? No. It's amazing. It's a really good I'll, one. It's, I'll yeah, bet. Because yeah. the yeah. new ones have all the new tech. And, you know, they're 
they're they're they're mind blowing the new pinball machines i love the yeah. vintage ones but the new ones i love too they have games within the games within the games you know and, mm. and i you know i hate to say this well not i don't hate to say it i'm i'm, I'm proud to say it but uh because of i i have these associations with the gnr camp whether it's with slash or whether it's with gilby and and um so on and so forth the gnr guns and roses pinball machines a really good one too okay have you ever played that have you never no. played that one as well There's no a lot, lot of different games in in that game as well and i know vic our producer is is fiendishly looking for for pinball machine uh photos but dude we're we're way past that we're, we're just talking you know what maybe we'll you do know, a whole other segment on the pinball machine. maybe but also we need to go to the gnr because frank the drummer is from new york the, the the drummer that that that's the drummer now with G, with Guns and Roses. Yeah, yeah. That's a friend of mine from New York. I'm like, you're playing with Guns and Roses? He's like, yeah. I mean, wow, what a gig. What band was he playing in when you were doing the New York scene? What, what um, bands was he in? Oh, Frank, I hope you're not listening. I can't remember what you, what well, band you were in, but he well, was always I mean, playing. He was so good. Everybody I'm sure everyone. it wasn't Spread Eagle because I mean, yes, Spread e <laughs> it was. Was it because Pre Spread yes. Eagle is like the L.A. Guns of of New York? You know, what I think saying? it was you, Spread Eagle. Every every band, if you a rite of passage, you know, in Los Angeles to be a musician is that you've had to have played in L.A. Guns at least one gig, which I have, and I'm a card carrying member. But in New York, I think you had to be a member of Spread Eagle or something like that <laughs> oh, um God. but yeah no i was so um i i see this i just wanted to mention that um that uh this thing that's we're looking at on the screen here um keith richards is, is sort of a god to me i think as far as like um the way we were talking about the way that i play guitar and what i um you know my influences around lyrics are one thing but guitar playing i just uh, i mean come on let's just talk about how amazing he is as a guitar player, just for one no, second. No doubt, no doubt. Right? I mean, like just the rhythm that he—he he is the guitar as far as the rhythm goes, and he's—he's he's not too showy, and he's never been like that lead guitar player, but he's always been such an incredible guitar player. Anyway, why am I talking about Keith Richards? Was Joan? We're was talking Joan about this a big uh, guitar hero for you as oh, well. Oh yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got bad reputation. I—I I played that like to death, yeah. that album. I, I, I bought I bought that at this. I mean, here we are living in like sort of um, opposite ends of the country. You're living in Jersey, and I'm and I'm in, I'm actually in a whole in uh, I'm I'm in a whole other time. I'm back in the seventies. I'm back in yeah, the well, in I'm those, back in the 70s right now too. But look at and me. I'm I'm my I mean I'm the soft focus back in the. <laughs> <laughs> has, has the I'm back in the penthouse gone magazine. Penthouse on us again. I'm going All penthouse. Right. <laughs> So the <laughs> thing is, bad reputation. I yeah. bought that cassette tape Wait, at the San Jose, <laughs> San Jose flea market. Yeah, right? and I and I played that motherfucking cassette till it unraveled. Yeah, I, I really. I, so there, there you go. There you right. go. And Ricky Bird is a great guitar player, and he's also he's like a, he's a friend of mine. And I Who if we've had on the podcast. As oh well. my God! Hi, Ricky. So Everybody has to go watch these old episodes yeah. of these games that we're dropping oh, right now because these are great. Ricky's listening. Hi, Ricky. He's such a <laughs> great guy. And he does amazing work with, with addicts and things like that, the clean getaway program thing he has in the, the music. And he's just such an amazing soul. What a great guy. Shit, man. At one point, we're going to have like to have a, uh, you know, a family reunion. We should. We should do a whole have. like Zoom thing. Of, like it'd be well, like the Brady Bunch. We can like go like this to each other, you know, the, the <laughs> squares. We'll some sort of episode like that. And uh, we'll invite Rick Browdy, of course. Don't tell him what I said <laughs> about his special guest. Oh, uh, look at that is. guy. That guy oh, is Rick something else. Turn. Yeah, uh, he's something so, else. <laughs> We'll have this uh, this episode of, of family gathering when you put out this um, you know sometime before when you put out the uh, next com upcoming record we can celebrate okay. it we can get together again and talk more it's been a pleasure having you on Bridget oh but my God the, it's been the, so the much EP, fun do you have do you have a, a working title with I it do. I do I've heard I've heard knives is knives it's called is knives yeah okay it's called knives now, where did that come from and. Ah, uh, okay. So, so it's a, 
<laughs> Should so, I be frightened? <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, yeah, actually. Um, well, I, no, I don't know. It, uh, it's a word that scares people. It and does. that's why, right? And that's yeah. why I called it knives, because it's like such a provocative word. But all it is is a, you know, you, you yeah. use up to cut your steak or whatever. So I quite like the idea of using a word that had this massive sort of 360 degree feeling around it. You know, so you've got the like there's a huge thing of knife crime in this in this uh in this in this country, so so knives and stuff, because we don't have guns in England, right? You, people get stabbed; they don't get shot. It's really sick. So it's sort of like, and it's called knife crime. But actually, if you just look at a knife, it's just something that we use every day and every you know. So I quite like that idea of it being this multifaceted word with all of these different connotations and all this emotional color around it. It's and one, I kind it's of, one of my favorite quotes from Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. I think he says, uh, "Guns for pros, knives for sh wait, knives for shows, guns for pros." Or, or maybe it's different. It's the opposite thing: guns for show, knives. Vic, for pros. what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's from Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and here's another thing: that's a great film that you know. Uh, well. What didn't Guy Ritchie, who is involved with Madonna, yeah, was involved with Madonna, yeah, yeah, pretty, uh, uh, directed that film, and Madonna came back all the way back to our Coney Island story, uh, yeah. Coney Island High story. But Alice Cooper himself is a professional knife thrower. So Get out go. of here! Wow, yes, he does that every single night before the show. He throws knives to targets. Well, Usually. tell him that I'm calling the album Knives because I think I'm just so fascinated by the whole, and also. Also, because they have a huge sort of ancient history. I mean, knives were used in, you know, ancient warrior kind of rituals and 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 such an old, old um kind of concept. But there's just something about really, it's just about that word, knives. Like I think really? it's a great title. I think thank it's you. A, and now and now that we have actually manufactured or come up with all these reasons why uh it's it's relevant to our to alice and it's relevant to 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 where you're living in the uk i mean we haven't come up with them that we've just i've just been brainstorming yeah but you also it's put you know title. butter on your bag you put your butter you know you take a knife and you put butter on your bagel or cream cheese on your bagel with a knife do you know what i mean it's like it's, it's so harmless it's it's, 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 it's so it's, harmless right yeah it's it's it's, it's like all these things <laughs> look at that that's a great picture that's exactly Aww. what he that's exactly what he throws and honestly if, so if Vic cool. was really cool he'd put up the video of Vic uh of him throwing the uh knives into my album cover and he's just said I I, I refuse to do that he's oh there's <laughs> the, oh look uh, pin, there's oh, there it's there called is. Nightmare Castle oh, I've got to, I've got to play that yeah, it's um, a good one. There's no pinball machines in England. It's just like they just don't even exist. No one thinks about them. So yeah, I gotta wait till I come back to the states. So I can play in, in England, in England, why don't in England? you talking like that? Is it, I, I, I have noticed that, Bridget, in the course of our interview. Don't say you, it. You have don't. it. You, you have don't. it. You want it or not? You have it. You got it. You got. I the don't. Accent. I don't. Oh my Do God, I, Bridget speaks like out. the Queen's English. No, I don't. No, I don't. I um. <laughs> it slips out. It's not. It's not obvious. You can be like. There's certain words, and honestly, I you know I I'm married to a South African who speaks proper proper English, and she lived in London for for many 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 years, and so every once in a while. That that UK will like one little word will come out fly out of me. I mean, I wish it flew out of me on the songs that I sing that I you know paid homage to Oasis with, but uh, <laughs> you know nine times out of ten, do do you hear yourself? I didn't hear your daughter have much of an accent, does she? Yeah, she really does. Okay. Yeah, um, my son does too. No, BB actually is is it has adopted more of an American vibe, so she quite likes the the American kind of thing, and so she quite likes to to have an American accent. But her accent's English. Um, I'm really proud of where I come from, so I really didn't want to. I, I kind of felt like I wanted to really hold on. I try and hold on to my accent as much as I can. Well, there's no doubt. I can tell. I can tell the American. You know, I can I can 
definitely hear it 90% of the time, but there's like a little Just every once in a while, yeah. Yeah, it falls out. I love like, it. Like, you know what? I was I was buying um, mascara the other day, mascara. and I thought, oh. yeah, and I thought, hmm, actually, that's an English way to say it, because we would say, how do you say it? Mascara. Ma mascara, right? But I, yeah, I actually mascara. said, oh, I need to get some mascara, and I went, oh, that's really English. <laughs> Nothing wrong no, with being English, no, but it's no, just no, like, I'm not. Get it at? If you get it at the shop, that would totally be English right out of the Yeah, door. you get no, it at the it, shop it, it, or you get it at the – um, Would you say get it at the store or you're American? If you say get it yeah, at the that's shop, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See, I probably say that too. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it comes out. It, it affects you in certain ways. You know, it, 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 it does. I, I see myself, you know, tomato, tomato. I, I Every once in a while I'll catch myself. Mm. And, and it's the same thing, you know. Our kids, you know, I, I can hear their Swedish accent come out slightly, yeah. but for the most yeah. part, it's 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 a it's a, a U.S. American based English. So yeah, there you go. I love it. We've gone crazy on all over the, but we've gone all over. No, I hope everybody is following us and not too, you know, going. <laughs> what the heck are you guys talking about? But well, that means there's good reasons to rewatch it, and uh, of course, check out Bridget on all her social medias and start following again. We'll yeah, put those links up. One I have time. those. Um, yeah, at the uh, Bridget West Facebook page, you'll you'll be able to find all these sort of videos I did over lockdown. I did those especially for fans. So please have a look, and um, yeah, I hope that you enjoy those and uh yeah bridget west new music on uh, gofundme and yeah follow me at bridget west music on instagram i just sort of started that one so you can kind of be founding followers if you if you start following me so that'd be brilliant we look forward to the new ep coming out knives which we've knives. discussed in detail you'll have to check it out everybody. thanks and of course hang out with us uh next week where we will have Carrie Kelly as our guest, and uh, it's going to be a great show as well. But uh, this one has been a great one, and it's time to uh, wrap it up. Hold on, Bridget, one time uh, before we go. Before we go, I do have to ask you. Yeah. Any sort of life lessons that you can pass on? Any sort of quote that you give uh, oh, yeah. that you've heard and influences you that might help our uh, followers of in the trenches um, sort of cope. And during these crazy times, what what is one of your sort of life lesson quotes that you get? Well, I'm going to say that you have a choice whether or not you want to think positively about life yourself um, and the world around you, or you want to think negative. So I, I'm a real sort of existentialist. Um, I believe we all have a choice. And I think it's really important to stay positive as much as you can. Positivity breeds positivity. Kindness breeds more kindness. So let's make the world better. And let's just be really kind to each other and supportive and stay positive. And that's really, um, no matter what's going on in your life, that's, that's the key. That's the magic, just to be positive. There you go. That's great light. That's great advice from Bridget West, our guest today <laughs> on In the Trenches. Uh, it is your choice. Stay positive. Yeah, and, stay uh, positive. Everybody, thanks for joining us on this episode. We'll see you next week. Until the next time, enjoy the ride, folks. See ya. Bye. <laughs>